Welcome back guys. Today we'll be rewriting the user's date to um, pull data from the pillar information. And what we'll do is that we'll go ahead and configure our salt master to designate a pillar resource. We'll write our user information in the pillars. We'll make sure it's synced with the minions. And then once it's synced, then we'll go ahead and pull the pillar information into the um, into the user or into the salt state and then it will go ahead and, and create the uh, user that way. Now the benefit of doing it this way is that you can iterate through the pillar. So let's say you have like 10 users rather than making 10 salt states you just make one salt state that has a for loop um, that iterates through the through the pillar and then just go ahead, goes ahead and creates that user. Um, if you don't have a lot of programming experience, it's fine. I will try to explain it as best as I can to uh, to uh, basically display, not display, sorry, maybe that's the wrong word, to show you exactly what each line is doing. And then from there on, uh, we will go ahead and run the state and hopefully everything should be fine. Now, this is my first time doing this, so it's not my first time doing this. I've done this in a previous job, but it's my first time testing it out. I haven't tested it out in any of the, like there's, there's no pre-test in this video. So this is as I go. So we may run into some issues and I expect to run into some issues and hopefully I can show you some of those issues and how to diagnose those issues and go from there. So we're gonna go ahead and create the pillar data here. Uh, I know it's a little misconceiving to say salt states and having pillars into the salt states, but I don't really want to go ahead and mess around with the uh, with the file structure a little anymore. So you can mess around with it. So you keep your salt states in a completely separate folder from the parents. So, but it really doesn't matter. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder. I'm, I'll name it pillars. And I'll have pillars for each environment as well. Um, although it's not really necessary, uh, you can go ahead and use the base pillars and pull whatever data you need. You need. Um, but just to show you that it is possible, we can create pillars for each environment. Um, so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go ahead and create base in pillars. So this is for the base environment. And then I'll create dev and QA. So create dev and QA. Now notice I haven't put prod here because there's really no, it, it's just gonna be another um, environment to push onto. There's no point. We haven't really even touched QA, so I don't see a reason to put prod. However, in a real world experience, you probably should go ahead and, and um, create a product environment as well. Now, another way I should probably mention is that these environments, another way to do this is to use uh, Git branches. So like master being prod integration or something else being QA and development branch being development. That way you keep the, you keep the branches separate and only merge what's supposed to be merged. So uh, you use a feature branch and so on. I'll go ahead and, um, and create that sort of environment in more advanced videos. This is for the, but let's just go ahead and use this for the, uh, for the basic ones. All right. So again, each of these, just like the salt state environments, each of these need a top.sls. So we'll go ahead and create a top.sls here and we'll say it's, and we'll create one here. And one here as well. Okay, so I don't really need any of these as of yet. All right, so we gone ahead. We went ahead and created these particular um, directories and files. So let's go ahead and configure the salt master. So this is my salt master is where we left off with the uh, high state. So if I do vi slash etc slash salt slash master dot d slash roots dot conf. Technically, this is a oops, I need to be pseudo. 
Technically, this is a uh, roots. It's pillar roots, not exactly file roots. So we're going to go ahead and create a new direct dictionary key. If you know your YAML, you know that's a dictionary key called pillar roots. And from here, we're going to have use two spaces, don't use tabs. We'll have the base environment. And that's going to be slash rsv slash salt states slash pillars, I believe it's pillars or pillar, yeah, pillars. And we'll have base, and then we'll have dev. And we'll have QA. Salt states, oops. Okay, like so. And let's make sure of that actually, now that we've got that pulled up. Open a new tab, salt pillar roots. Um, let's see here. Yep, pillar roots base, that's every directory, whichever it is, doesn't matter. Okay, so just like uh, uh, salt state environments, pillar environments also have to have a top.sls. It's what defines the environment. And whenever you go ahead and sync between the, the environment from dev, you have to sync environment from uh, the QA pillars as well. So like if you have a dev, if you're running state high state from dev, then you need to make sure that the data for the pillar is also gonna be in dev or base, one of the two. Base sort of encompasses all of the, it should encompass all of the environments where QA and uh, QA dev and so on is restricted to their servers or minions only. That's the way it should be. Um, it should be architected. So let's go ahead and push this into the into the GitHub repository. Actually, while we're at it, I missed one more thing uh, that I wanted to fix. The readme files are very, very important. So let's go ahead and fix the readme files because um, they should describe what each state is doing or what each environment is for. So this is this is fine. This is salt states and we'll capitalize the S. This is salt states, all salt environments. Okay. Uh, this is QA and we'll put another readme file here. Uh, salt QA environment and then we'll do the same thing for dev new file salt dev environment And we'll, we already have one for base, I believe, but this one needs to be renamed because that's not very informative. Um, we will go ahead and do salt base environment. Okay, so we should also have uh, readme.md uh, readme for each salt state as well. So it describes what the salt state does without having to go into the code. Um, this one here, as we can see, it installs Apache and it puts the index.html there uh, in the uh, var www.html and it enables a service. So what I'd like to do is that here we'll create a new file and we'll say this is state Apache and we'll from here Now I like to do um, sort of bullet or or list of steps of things that salt state does rather than having a whole paragraph there. You you want to be able to describe what it does in very short and concise manner. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and create bullet points, and that's gonna say it installs uh, Apache, create index.html 
from template source and enables uh, Apache service. And that's all it does. Uh, you can have a contributor of, of who created this uh, particular state or who started it and so on, but there's no really need for any of that. Anyways, you want to keep this file short and, and concise. So just like so. And this one here will have the same deal. This is state users and let's follow the same sort of pattern. Yep, so state users, uh, what this does and let's get rid of that period actually. What this does is that it creates a user, creates user, creates key, uh, SSH key for user. And I believe that's it. I don't think it does much anything else. So uh, let's see. Got let's see in its code. See, this is why we should um, uh, always have a README so we can not have to look at the code. So it creates the user, but it also sets the UID. Uh, as well as the group and also creates a key which you already have so so it creates the user sets sets group for user sets uh, the UID for the user and creates the SSH key okay so that's that and then I don't think we have anything else we create. Yep, yeah, we got the one in dev. Oh, and we didn't get the user in dev. So let's go ahead and create the same thing here in dev. Um, from source keys. So we'll create another readme.md here. Oops. And we'll go ahead and get rid of that bit. And there we go. So now we have README everywhere. So we can go ahead and easily see what each particular environment or state is for. It's, it's just for documentation. Anyways, so we've got all of that. Let's go ahead and we will add this, add all files, commit. And we created uh, create pillar environment and create readmes for state files and environments. Okay. So, oh, I forgot to create readmes for these. Uh, I guess I'll do that in the next push. All right, uh, well, before I pull it at least, so I can go ahead and do it here now. Um, so new file, and this is a pillar. Go. This is pillar for base environment. This is pillar for dev environment, and so on. And this is for QA. Bear with me here. I know I'm a slow typer, I apologize. For QA environment. Did I name it? Oh, syntactics pillar? Yeah, okay, great. 
All right, so let me go ahead and close all of that. We don't need it anymore. And then we'll go ahead and add commit, create a readme for pillar environments. And we'll push it in a second. So I've got the pillars created, or sorry, the pillar readme created, and then we need to create the pillars, which is very similar to creating the states and assigning them to top.sls. The difference between the pillar and the states is that when you have a state, you don't have to have the state in the top.sls because they can be executed uh, individually uh, via salt CLI. However, for the pillar, you have to have the pillar um, in the top.sls top .sls for that particular environment. If you do not have it for that environment, then it's going to go ahead and not actually push any data through and you'll have missing data when you try to call the pillar uh, information into the state. So it has to be synced that way. You cannot sync pillar information without putting it in top.sls. Right. With that said, um, let's go ahead and push this. All right. Allow. Unfortunately, this video is going to be a little long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and split up the video from here uh, into two videos. So we're going to go ahead and carry on to the next one uh, from here on. I'll see you guys then.